is I believe that that worship and the reason we sing yes is to honor God and to, to love Him and express to Him in song just like the psalmist did is to express to Him. We, we play the strings to honor the Lord. We, we play the cymbals and the drums to honor the Lord. We lift our voice to honor the Lord. Somebody say amen. Amen. And, and what worship will do in your life is exactly what you allow it to do. Because you will get out of worship what you put into it. Come on, somebody. You, you, you put half heart into it, you're getting half back. Come on, somebody. But you give it your all and you just worship Him unashamedly. I don't care who's listening to me when I don't hit a note. Come on, somebody. Because I'm worshiping Jesus. And to Him, all notes sound good. Because he's got grace and mercy like that. Hang man. Amen. Come on, somebody. He, he hears with a different ear. Come on, somebody. Right. Right. Amen. Sure. And, uh, you know, we've all heard the expression, what goes up must come down. Amen. The same is true in worship. God inhabits the praises of his people. And it don't have to just be here in this sanctuary. That's right. That's right. Come on, somebody. If the only time we ever pause and worship the Lord and, and thank Him and, and just sing unto the Lord a new song is when we come to church, you're missing out. Amen. 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 And so so worship is this, this attitude of reverence and, and respect and, and gratitude and, and honoring the Lord and all that He does and all that He has done and who He is and, and what He has done um, to us what he has done for us. You know, you can know what he's done for you, but until you know what he's done to you. Huh. Y'all don't know how good that just was right there. You can know about the Lord. You can know what, I can tell you what he's done for you. People told me what he's done for me, but until I experience what he does to me, Totally different. Totally different. That's why the Bible says, taste and see that the Lord is good. Yeah. It can look good. It can sound good, but until you taste, whew, man, it's better than I thought of it. It's better than it looked. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. I want you to open up your Bible this morning to Mark, the Gospel of Mark. Chapter 12, the Gospel of Mark, chapter 12. The title of my message today is Qualifying Love. Qualifying Love. How many of y'all know that love is a word that's thrown around a lot today? Yeah. Love is one of those words that a lot of people say it, but a lot of people don't qualify it. And so we're going to talk about qualifying love today. What does that mean? What does it look like? How, does, how do we fit into that? Qualifying love. In Mark chapter 12 and verse 30, the word of God says this. It says, And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, God, thank you for your word. Thank you for its eternalness. Thank you that it is yes and amen with you. God, thank you that you will accomplish through the preaching of your word that which you want to accomplish. That your word will not return void, God, but it will make happen, God, what you want, what you will it to, God. May our hearts receive it today, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen. And amen. If I was to ask this morning, uh, especially in church, if I was to ask this morning here in church, do you love God? Everybody would overwhelm and be like, well, yeah, duh, right? We'd be like, yes, yes, I love God. Turn me down just a, just a hair. I feel like I'm a little, a little too loud. Turn me down just a little bit, please. Uh, love is one of those words that is 
that is misused, it's misapplied, and, and often, and especially even in church. Uh, over the years, I've had numerous, more people than I could count on my fingers and toes tell me they love me. Come on, somebody. I love you, Pastor. I love you, brother. And strangely, many of those that have professed that love, they've spoken about that love, it no longer exists. Or it's very absent, I should say. Come on, somebody. See, saying that we love someone or saying that we love God is cheap. Anybody can say it. That's the cheap part of it. Come on, somebody. It's easy to say it. <laughs> it's easy to say it, but actually, truly loving isn't cheap at all. No, truly loving isn't cheap at all. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. Love is not cheap. <laughs> Love will cost you just like it cost the Father. Love cost the Father His only begotten Son. No greater love has anyone than a man lay down his life for his brother. Scarcely you would die for a good man, but Jesus so loved that He even died for the enemies. Wow, what love. Actually, truly loving isn't cheap at all. In 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 4, it says this. Love is kind and patient, never jealous, boastful, proud. Verse 5, it is not rude. Love isn't selfish or quick-tempered. <coughs> it doesn't keep record of wrongs that others do. Verse 6, love rejoices in the truth, but not in evil. Verse 7, love is always supportive, loyal, hopeful, and trusting. Verse 8, love never fails. Everyone who prophesies will stop. And unknown languages will no longer be spoken. All that we know will be forgotten. Y'all see this? Amen. Put verse 8 back up there. That ain't the one I had up there. <laughs> Where's my other one? You just messed up my whole thing. Did y'all change that? <laughs> you changed it? Oh, you're messing me up, brother. He changed it. Okay, here's what we're going to do. Take that off the screen. William, since you changed what I put on the screen, you change it back. <laughs> oh, oh, why, why, why? He's like, well, that ain't right. Pastor must have made a mistake there. I better put the, the other ones in there. <laughs> yeah. I said, you know what? It's my, I should have I should have let him know, hey, that's right, leave it alone. <laughs> that's it, right there. <laughs> Is that the only one you're gonna change? Or you you're not gonna do the rest of them? No. no, it's okay. I won't mind. I've embarrassed you enough. Okay. <laughs> see, see, my point was <laughs> the point I was gonna make was when I'm reading through all them verses, y'all are gonna be like. Huh? Well, yeah, and so I knew I just knew someone like, hey, it ain't right up there. Because I know how y'all y'all been like, hey, wait a minute. Yeah, you've been like, dude, what's up? What the hell? But see, there now I don't know. There may be somebody in here that can read that, but it ain't me. <laughs> see, people, you can say love in all kinds of languages. But there's only one way that love can be seen in all languages. You got to be able to see it. Because people can say they love and it sounds foreign. It sounds like, what do you, yeah, sure you do. Come on, somebody. And then we can talk about love, but you all would have never known. What is that? I don't say love. That's not what that's saying. You see, love is not just saying. Love is not just speaking. Love is not just a language. <coughs> You cannot qualify love by simply saying you love God. You cannot qualify love by simply saying to your wife, I love you. That's right. That's right. Saying it does not qualify it. Right. No more than God could have said, hey, I love you so much. I love you guys. I just 
just want you to know I love you. Yeah, he said he loved me. Right. Right. But how do we qualify that love? How does God qualify that love? How does he qualify that love? He qualified it by not only sending his son, but he qualified love by that his son died when we were yet still sinners. That's how God qualified love. How do we qualify love? How do you qualify love? When you tell someone, I love you. I'm a little hesitant sometimes. I'm not going to lie. People say, I love you. I'm like, thanks, man. Because it's just, we throw it out. We throw it out. And, and oftentimes, it can't be seen. Yeah. As Christians, we all love Jesus. I love the Lord. How is that love qualified in your, our lives? How, how do we qualify that statement, that profession, that we say, even as Christians, even as professing believers in Jesus, how do we qualify that we love God? It's got to be more than just saying it. Thank you, one person. One person. Everybody else is like, oh Lord, where's he going? Amen. Saying we love God. It may seem foreign at times because if, unless you see love, you're just simply saying it. Saying we love God is one thing, loving God is another. Saying you love me or I saying I love you is one thing. Actually loving one another is another. See, love is not love if it is never qualified by action. Love is not love if it is never acted upon. If it never expresses indeed what you are saying in word. If love never expresses itself indeed in what we do and we simply just <laughs> say we love, then it's not really love. Because when we truly love God, when we truly love one another, it will be expressed in deed and not word only. Amen. Yeah. Love is qualified when, well, listen to me, love is qualified when it has had, listen, the opportunity not to be patient. 1 Corinthians. Love is qualified when it has had the opportunity not to be kind. I love you, and then we're unkind. I love you, but then we're impatient. Come on, somebody. Love is qualified. Love is not qualified. Love is qualified when it has had the opportunity to envy. Love is qualified when it's had the opportunity to be rude, but doesn't. Love is qualified when it has had the opportunity to be selfish, but is giving. Love is qualified when it has had the opportunity to be quick-tempered, but it isn't. Love is qualified when it has the opportunity to keep records of wrong. But it chooses to keep that file closed. Amen. Yeah. 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 We can say we love God and we can say we love each other all day long. <laughs> we can sing about it. We can tweet about it. We can Facebook about it. But until it is qualified in practice, it's not love. Right. It's just words. Yeah. Come on, somebody. Until it is qualified, it is only words. It is only it is only just 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 it's just out there. Love is not qualified by what we say. It is qualified by what we do. Amen. It is qualified by why we do it. It is qualified by when we do it. Mm -hmm. yep. Love is agape. That is God's type of love. <laughs> it is the it is love in truth. It is love when love doesn't feel like it. Huh. 
Love is qualified by sticking around when you want to leave. Amen. Yep. Oh, man. My wife, early on, my wife and I, there was plenty of opportunity. Come on, somebody. Plenty of opportunity to just say, but love says, I guess I'll forgive him. <laughs> Come on, somebody. See, love is not qualified by saying I do. Love is qualified qualified by continually saying I will. See, we're not talking about phileo here. We're not talking about this natural love, these feelings, feelings. If, we, if my wife and I stuck together because we always felt in love. Amen. Come on, somebody. We haven't been together for over 16 years now because we've always felt like we was in love. That's right. That's right. Because love is not qualified by a feeling. And that's the problem with many people. That unless I feel like I love you, <coughs> I must not love you anymore. That's the feeling, the phileo, this natural, these natural sensibilities where I don't feel a certain way, so I must have fallen out of love. And that, unfortunately, has crept into the church. Because professing Christians divorce at the same rate as unbelievers. Amen or oh me. Come on somebody. Why? Because we don't feel it. And we've bought into this psychobabble of the world that says, well, if, you don't, if you're not in love anymore, you should go somewhere else because you should be happy. Yeah. No, if you don't feel and it's, and it's that bad, then you need to go get counseling. Yeah. You need to work some stuff out. You need to get to the bottom of it. Come on, somebody. That's right. That's right. Amen. Hallelujah. I know it's not always easy. I've been divorced. I understand. So there's no stones coming from the pulpit this morning. Are you with me? Amen. I understand those feelings. I understand that the easy thing is just to go do something else. Come on, somebody. But love is not qualified by quitting. Love is qualified by sticking it out. Amen. That's love. That's true love. True love believes all things, hopes all things. It is qualified only by adversity. That when I can choose not to love, do I choose love? Amen. When I have justification not to love you anymore. Yep. Come on, somebody. Do I have justification not to love you no more? So I'm, I'm just done. Yep. Come on. See, love is not qualified by feelings. Love is qualified by doing what love demands. Right. Laying down one's life for another. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Yeah. In 1 John chapter uh, 4, verse 7, <clears throat> it says... Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God. And everyone that loveth is born of God, and knoweth God. Now watch this. He that loveth not, knoweth not God. What kind of love are we talking about here? It ain't the feeling type of love. Right. Come on, somebody. It's not that like, oh, I feel, I'm just so, ooh, I feel all these goosebumps and I just get butterflies in my stomach and every time I'm around I just feel, 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 feel. <laughs> my wife will tell you I've given her more butterflies over the years than she can count so 
in case you were here last night, it's a comedy, comedy thing. Every once in a while, that's creepy. And she'll tell you that. She'll, she will admit. <coughs> and she will also say that I've given her just as many feelings of nauseousness. <laughs> like, uh, uh, I just want to strangle you. <laughs> Come on, somebody. But she's still here. Yeah. She's, she, she's still with me. She's never left. Yeah. It's because I got so much money. Right. <laughs> 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 Leftovers for dinner today, by the way. <laughs> Hallelujah. Leftover channel. <laughs> but he that loveth not knoweth not God. Think about this, church. It's not, it's, it's, we are missing it. We, it's not enough to say I love. It has to be qualified by doing. By what I do, why I do it, when I do it, the reasons I do it, it's, it's love. In 1 John 3, 16, it says this, Hereby perceive we the love of God. We understand it, we perceive it. Because he laid down his life for us. Love, it doesn't say, hereby we perceive the love of God because he said it. He says, we perceive the love of God because he did something to prove it. He qualified his love for us. You do, you never have to wonder. If God loves you, Amen. He did not decide to die for you because you were good. Amen. I love one of the things that Tim Hawkins said last night. I've heard it before, but I thought, man, that is so true. That God didn't die to make bad people good. He died to make dead people alive. Amen. I love that. We never have to wonder, does God love me? Yes! Absolutely, undeniably that God loves you. Because he proved it by giving his son for you. He didn't prove it because he said, hey, by the way, people of the earth, I love you. Remember that. I, don't, I, can't, I can't even begin to tell you how many times over the years that my feelings have lied to me. <laughs> Come on. I cannot begin to, to, to calculate in my Christian life how many times my feelings have lied to me. I sin. I fall short. Oh, man. God's just, oh, man. Oh, I just, I'm no good. Oh, I'm just this. I'm just that. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a yeah, I am. But man, oh, how he loves me. Oh, how his mercy is extended to me. Amen. How, oh, how his mercy is new every day. Lord, I don't want to sin against you, God. It breaks my heart. Mm -hmm. I never have to doubt the love of God. And neither do you. Amen. Because he demonstrated, he qualified his love for you on the cross of Calvary through the shed blood of the Lamb of God, He qualified it 100%. Undeniably, He loves you. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Now that said, the question is, do we love Him? Mm. And just simply saying it does not qualify it either. That's right, yeah. We, we know this, we perceive the love because he laid down his life for us. And we ought to, verse 6, and we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. Yeah. Verse 17, but whoso hath, listen, here, here it is, but whoso hath this world's good and seeth his brother have need and shutteth up his bowels of compassion from him. How dwelleth the love of God in him? Mm. 
Amen. Amen. Amen or oh me. Amen. How? See, it's, it's a qualifying statement here. Yeah. You can't say, I love you, brother, and he's naked. That's right. That's right. I'm praying for you, brother, and he's naked. Right. And you walk off, and you got a whole closet full of jeans and clothes. Right. That's right. Yeah. Thank you, little man. <laughs> because love has, it must, it demands to be qualified. Yep. Not just said. That's right, man. Are you with me? See, I can't just say the game and he's naked. And I say, game, I love you, brother. I'm praying for you. God is going to provide for you. That's right. And then I go back this way. Yet he's still naked. Say to someone, man, I'm praying for you. I believe in God to provide food for your family. Yeah. And I got a whole freezer full of it. That's right, yeah. Come on. Yeah. It is qualified by I love you when I qualify by doing for you what is needed. Yeah. That is qualifying love, church. That is love being qualified. And God qualified his love by giving his life for us because that is exactly what we needed. Not, listen, not what we deserved. Love is not qualified by giving it to who deserves it. Love is qualified when you don't deserve it. A lot of times we see somebody in need of food or clothing or whatever it may be. Well, they just need to get a job. <laughs> they just need that, you know. And here we are, we're rolling. Yep. Come on, somebody. How can the love of God be in him when he sees his brother in need and we, he closes off his bowels of compassion God is compassionate. When Jesus seen the multitude, he was moved with compassion. Yeah. Because they were sheep having no shepherd. Mm. I wonder what we see when we see the multitude that are lost in sin. I wonder what we as a church, as believers, what do we see? What do we see when we see the crack addict? What do we see when we see the homosexual? What do we see when we see those that are living out of the out of the safe zone of God's word? What do we see when we see people? What, how do we feel about it? What is it that we're moved by? Are we offended at their sin? I love what Apostle Paul said in Corinthians. He said, listen, listen, listen up. He said, such were some of you. That's right. And he gave a list of all of these sinful practices, including, might I add, homosexuality. That's right. And he said to the believers, he said, such were some of you. Right. Yeah. So be careful how you turn your nose up. That's right. Yeah. Don't be going around talking about how much I love God. Right. Yeah. And then we, we're offended and just put off by sin. Errors. We should be put off by sin. Can I get an amen? It should offend. Sin should offend us because it is an affront to the heart of God. Sometimes we ain't even got that figured out yet. God says, hate the sin, love the sin. No, he never said that. He never said that. No. Look it up. He never, find it. Prove me wrong. He never said that. But yet we quote it like he did. Yeah. God hates sin. Yeah. Come on, somebody hates it. The wicked man. Oh, I just, oh. <clears throat> Come on, somebody. See, we've forgotten that part of the gospel.